Hi, welcome to the Oliver Fetter YouTube channel. Today, I wanna to talk about my van transfer case install, which is kind of one of two steps towards having a four wheel drive converted Ford Econoline van. And I just kind of wanted to reflect on some of the steps that went into it and some of the planning and some of the messy parts and just kind of throw this out there for other people who are considering undertaking a four wheel drive conversion on their own Ford van um, because it was definitely a spicy project and spicy enough that I decided not to film any of it, really. Made some short videos with my phone, but for the most part, I was downright shit hammering to get it done in time to go back to work at the end of this week. So <laughs> instead of filming the actual thing, we're just gonna reflect on what happened uh, and I'll get some videos of the van. So first, just kind of a quick overview. I have a 2006 Ford E350 van. It has a 5.4 liter two valve engine, the Triton V8, and a 4R75W transmission. That's the setup, that's what I was working with from the start. You need to figure out what you're working with and to see if it's relevant, but if you have a van, around 06, you know, in that generation, chances are it has the 5.4 in it anyways, or 4.6 and the 4R75W, so it's all very similar. At any rate, what kind of kicked me off on this project is that I knew I needed to get a transfer case, and I didn't want to do the front axle first because, well, actually what kicked me off on this project is the fact that my transmission was acting a little funny, so I had already bought a transfer case to do this because it's not hard to find transfer cases. Now, I didn't go with a giga rugged, you know, super duty, you know, NP271 or whatever it is, you know, heavy duty geared transfer case. Not what I went with. I ended up going with the Borg Warner 4406, uh, which is actually found in like a 98 to 03 F150. But what works about it, and the reason I ended up with that, is because a 98 to like 01 F-150 also had a 5.4 liter with the 4R75W transmission and just had that transfer case tacked on to the back of it. So you're adding a completely OEM supported transfer case to your drive line, which is way easier than, you know, fiddling with adapters and all kinds of weird shit. Uh, or at least I thought it would be. And in the sense that everything bolted right up, it was that simple. Uh, I got the transfer case, I got the tail housing adapter, and then the real stick in the mud on this project is that you have to change the output shaft of your transmission if you're going to run it with a 4x4 transfer case. So point being, I got my transfer case first and that was just kind of sitting around on my mind. And I was like, cool, this is here, I'll get to it soon. But then my transmission started acting funny and I knew already that I would have to change the output shaft of the transmission in order to do this. But I also knew that if my transmission was acting funny, then it wouldn't, you could kind of get two birds stoned at once there and do a transmission overhaul to kind of address those problems while installing the transfer case. So that was kind of my plan for this. And my transmission specifically was doing like a couple things uh, in first gear, like going down a hill, you know, selected in first gear. It should be holding it there, engine braking, and instead it'd be like kind of engine braking, kind of releasing, kind of engine braking, kind of releasing. So that was weird. And then it also had like some pretty strange clunks uh, with overdrive on and off and on and off the gas, like there was things had play that you could tell. So I knew it probably needed service or looked at at least anyways. So I just went ahead and after my last couple weeks of working, I was like, screw it this week, I'm gonna order all the shit. We're gonna rebuild the transmission and change its output shaft, which, you know, to change the output shaft of the transmission, everything has to come out of the transmission. <laughs> and we're gonna put the transfer case in. We're just gonna, it won't be that bad, you know? I mean, it, I knew it was gonna take a while, but it, I thought it'd be relatively straightforward. So before I go into storytelling mode, just a 
basically what you need to know about putting this in and what I didn't know entirely while putting this in is that to fit the transfer case, to add a transfer case to this setup, there are quite a few steps and some of them I learned along the way, but you need to have the transfer case, have your transmission tail housing adapter for four by four transfer case. You need to change your transmission's output shaft to one that fits with the transfer case. You need to change the yoke on your drive shaft. You need to shorten the drive shaft. So that's at least five things. You have to lower your transmission mount with either drop brackets or by cutting and rewelding it differently. You need to reroute your exhaust most likely because it'll hit the transfer case for at seven. And then you need to shorten the front of your gas tank because that is where the transfer case actually goes. That's eight. Did I forget anything else? No. So there's like each one of those is a good size project for someone who's bad at it and is still a medium sized project for someone who's good at it or at least a mid small size project. So, you know, you have eight mini projects to do to complete the one project of putting in this transfer case into your van. Uh, and so it definitely is involved. <laughs> trying to think of everything I just ordered off the bat. I did the flex plate, a rebuild kit, the shift kit, the output shaft and tail housing, and the transfer case. I bought all that shit ahead of time and was like, okay, we're good to go. And then, you know, I, first thing to do is obviously to pull the transmission in the drive shaft, got the transmission in here, uh, started taking it apart. Taking apart a transmission, not hard, honestly requires basically no special tools. You need a couple of things to press on. You need some basic knowledge. You might want to pick up a book that tells you how to do it. I picked up like a shop manual to do it and that was pretty helpful. And at any rate, you know, I, I pulled my transmission apart and I have my full rebuild kit. I went with the full, full rebuild kit, which was like clutches, frictions, or er, steels, frictions, all the seals, all the bearings, all the bushings, all the everything that needs replaced. But it doesn't include any of the drums. It doesn't include any of the shift solenoids, which are like the plungers that actually actuate things. And so even though it's a very complete kit at like $585, it still doesn't include everything I need. So I tore it apart and I rebuilt it. You know, I. And I have a mini hydraulic press, which is super helpful for doing the bushings because bushings are super pain. Those probably took the most time of anything. Replacing the clutch packs takes like, I don't know, a morning if that, like you're just prying off snap rings and laying in clutches and stuff. And I didn't actually check my clutch clearances after the fact. Probably would be a good idea, but the van works. So she ships at any rate. I fully assembled it, like put my transmission all together except the valve body. I left that stuff off still. Had all the internals assembled and stacked up and then was just kind of like thinking about it more. And there's two kind of other things that were on my mind after assembling it that I wasn't happy with. One is the direct drum, which is behind the planetary gear set like down in the case near the end, uh, that drum gets worn on the inside. So there's a spline shaft that goes into it and it gets loose, which I honestly think was like most of my driveline slop is just the fact that that thing was loose. And so you have to replace the direct drum. So I did picked up a direct drum, which was not included, which I don't know why it wouldn't be included because I've come to understand that that's just a common problem with these transmissions is that you need a new direct drum every time you rebuild them. And then the next thing that I did too is that the I put it after I had it together, the direct drum I did before, but after I had it together, I realized the sun gear is like notched. It, you know, it basically has like, like fingers that go into other fingers on the reverse drum. And because they do this motion all the time, there were literally like cuts slash like notches pushed into the teeth on the sun gear. Uh, and so I figured that isn't what you want either. So I bought a new one of those after the fact. And then the one other thing that was a little funny too is I installed my planet 
like the front planet gear bushing uh, and the center support, I put it in a little wonky and it just seemed a little bit too tight and I was gonna ship it and then on second thought, I was like, you know what, let me just replace that again because I don't like that. And you know, another $10 for a new bushing and it definitely was okay afterwards. So I think that was a good decision as well. So then the rest of my transmission assembly was like decently straightforward. I put all everything back in, you know, new direct drum, new sun gear. After those, I checked my end play, just like on the bench, big piece of metal clamped to the face of it. Uh, you know, gauge reading outputs, changed the thrust washer to match. Wasn't too bad, put that together, put my valve body on, put the valve, the shift kit in the valve body before putting it on. It's worth noting too, I didn't, I don't have a parts washer or a good place to wash parts. So I just did the best I could, like cleaning things with brake clean and rags and whatever, and it, it works. Uh, I wish I could have put my valve body through like a super intense dishwasher or something, but whatever. And so now I have shift kit, all that in. Oh, and I went with a high stall torque converter as well. So all that went back in the car with the new flex plate. And that was kind of like, that took me probably like four to five days, not full days, like half days, but still took me like part of good, good part of a week of running errands and working on the transmission to like get that thing fully together and back into the car. So at that point, I thought I was kind of like good to go. Money temp. I thought I was good to go, I was like, cool. Cause to me, the transmission was like the most complicated part of the job. I have not taken apart a transmission before. So I was just, just like working against my own inexperience and general concern that I was about to fuck it up the whole time. So I got my transmission in and I put it in there with the factory uh, transmission support mount, you know, the, the like big piece of metal that goes woo -woo under your van. I put it back in with that and it was real close to the floor. And I was like, huh, that looks like it's not gonna fit. So at this point, the gas tank was out of the car uh, and I went ahead and was trying to dry fit my transfer case, uh, which I was expecting at this point to bolt directly up, but no shot. Of course, it hit the floor and like the floor cross member and there was no room to bolt the transfer case. So that was an unexpected step for me. I had to kind of scramble to come up with a solution. Eventually I put a transmission jack back under the transmission while the transmission's attached to the engine. And I supported it that way, chopped the mount to into pieces, like cut most of it out so the transmission can go up and down. And then I lowered the transmission on the jack enough to the point where I could put the transfer case on it with good clearance on between, you know, the floor and the transfer case. And then I re-welded metal like steel to reconnect the transmission mount pieces together at that new height while it was all still jigged together. And so that kind of ironed that problem out. And then everything else was kind of like buttoning stuff up. The one thing I didn't expect is that your drive shaft yoke actually has to get changed. So I like went to the junkyard and picked up an F-150 drive shaft yoke. The yokes, like the diameter of the splines is actually bigger. There's more splines than on the original output shaft of your transmission. So I went and picked up a junk drive shaft with the yoke that I knew would fit and then brought that to the drive shaft shop along with the aluminum drive shaft to get shortened and told them, hey, please swap the yokes and shorten this drive shaft. And also while I had everything in and like was fit checking, I measured how long my drive shaft would have to be and or how much I needed to remove from the drive shaft. And so I could send that off to the shop to get done. So while that's getting done, the last thing that totally porked my timeline on this, because at this point it was ready in a week. I did the transmission in like four or five days, four days really. And then I had the transfer case, the transmission mount, all that shit back in like within another couple days. Uh, but what really porked me was that I shortened the gas tank, which wasn't actually that bad. You just kind of like, as I first tried to put, to, to trim the gas tank, you know, all you really have to do is mark it, do your best to cut it once, and you're not gonna get it like flat. There's no chance, because it's a really weird shape. But then after you cut it once, you can hold that same, that nice flat plate of metal you're gonna seal the end with up to it, and you can actually like, 
you know, hold a marker off of that edge and trace a nice crisp line all the way around. And now you have a perfect cut to work with. So welding that up is very straightforward. You know, you're just welding a steel tank to a steel plate. You can use a MIG welder, it's all good. Uh, but what I didn't expect, that was actually a horrible time crunch this week because I'm going back to work like in a few days, was that I had to seal that weld with gas tank liner. And I, I, my first plan was just to not do that. And then I put some gas in the tank and like swished it around my weld and you know, uh, there was like nine, 10 leaks from pinholes in the weld. And so that wasn't good enough for me. So I was like, okay, we have to seal it. But the gas tank sealer takes 96 hours to dry. That's four days. So even though my van was ready to drive on Sunday night, I haven't, I didn't actually put gas in it and start it until Thursday, like afternoon. I had to wait all that time just for the stupid gas tank liner to dry. All the while wondering if my transmission rebuild was gonna work because I haven't done that before. <laughs> So that was like way too intense to deal with uh, in general. But you know, at the end of the day, I, I put everything back in. Uh, I welded the exhaust up. That honestly wasn't so bad because you don't have to readjust that much. It's only like this much of the cross section, you know, the exhaust that goes from this side to that side that you really have to worry about. Got that all back in got my shifter routed. The shifter was interesting too because I initially cut the hole for it way too big and way too far back. I would definitely recommend removing your seats, pulling up the carpet first and cutting your hole like pretty far forward, like directly over where the shifter connects to the transfer case. And the other thing I had to do in that vein too is I had to shorten the transfer case linkage just a little bit between the shifter and the transfer case where like that link, I had to take probably like a half inch out of it or, or an inch, something like that. All in all, it went decently smoothly. Uh, you know, that was kind of my dramatic story of how it went for me, but you get the idea. Like those are all the steps you're gonna have to take. Oh, and then finally last night, I get the tank in because it's dry finally. I put gas in it and I already have some transmission fluid in my transmission, but you know, I, I wasn't sure how much it was gonna take. I got four gallons just to have on hand. It already had two quarts in the torque converter. It had basically the rest of like two or three quarts in the pan. And I was like, oh, that's like probably enough, right? Uh, and so I started it and, you know, started it, turned it off, filled it immediately, started it again, ran it through the gears, you know, put it in drive, absolutely nothing happens. And I was like, okay, I can't rebuild transmissions, I was panicking. Uh, and then it turns out when you rebuild a transmission, you have to add a lot of fluid to it. So then I ended up adding almost three total gallons of ATF to my transmission and continued cycling it through its gears, you know, a bunch of times, forward, reverse, forward, reverse. And then once it actually moved, like, once you got to the point where you'd put it in drive and it would actually select drive, you know, and like put tension on your drive chain immediately. Then I finished, cause it was still weird and wonky. I finished by starting to take it on drives around the block. I think I took it on three separate drives around the block where I'd fill it a bit, take it down the street, up and around, come back. Cause at that point going up the hill and down and around was enough to get like most of the fluid out of the transmission dipstick tube from filling it at which point I could check the fluid level again and then add some as needed. Anyways, it was a long process of doing that last night. Uh, not that long, but at least an hour worth of filling it, checking it, filling it, checking it. The whole, all the while panicking that like I had failed on my rebuild and that the clutch packs weren't engaging and that's why it wasn't moving. Uh, yeah, small things. Uh, but at any rate, it now works. Uh, and it was a kind of a fat undertaking overall. Uh, I think I kind of massively underestimated it. Like I knew it'd be a lot of work, but like it's a lot of work, especially if you don't know what you're doing. I think now if I did a second one, it would be a lot smoother because I'd be fully planned for each step. I guess like couple quick reflections on things overall. If you were thinking of doing like this same project, adding the transfer case, keeping your same transmission, yada, yada. Uh, if your transmission's working well, don't 
don't buy a full rebuild kit. Just go in there and like change your output shaft and maybe slap a shift kit in it and get out and do it carefully. Cause I felt like I spent most of the money on transmission parts on my rebuild. And it seemed to me like the parts I really needed were the direct drum and the sun gear and maybe some new bushings. And I'm glad I did a full rebuild on mine, I guess, because it had a lot of miles on it. But if yours doesn't have a lot of miles on it, like don't, don't bother. Like clutches and steels and all of that like can be reused if they're good and not burnt. So I would highly recommend leaving extra time, finding a local transmission parts store from which to source the parts you need and then start by taking it apart and checking everything as opposed to like ordering a shitload of parts first and throwing them all in there anyways. Like I wish I took it apart, saw what it needed, got those specific parts, put them in and put it back together and I probably would have spent half as much on the transmission. And then as far as the other parts of the project, you know, just know you need to do them. Uh, like dropping mounts and cutting exhaust and reworking exhaust. Phew! Well, at any rate, that felt like at least a half hour worth of rambling about what I just did. I hope there are some helpful nuggets in there for you if you were considering doing this. This isn't to dissuade you from doing it because it's kind of a fun project overall. You get into lots of interesting drivetrain components when you do it, but it is burly and you need to know what you're getting into. Um, at any rate, Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Appreciate ya.